أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Inshallah, I, I'm not worthy, subhanAllah, to be talking here right now on this, on this moment. But inshallah, I'll just discuss a few things briefly from hadith. Starting with the hadith from the Bakari sources, which is Sahih al-Bukhari. And then inshallah, I'll go into our own hadith, which inshallah, should put some light on what we're doing today, who we commemorate and why, inshallah. So in Sahih al-Bukhari, in book 76, contrary to what a lot of Bakaris believe, that all Sahaba were forgiven in some way or shape or form, that they are guaranteed Jannah, that all Sahaba are okay. This hadith will speak for itself, inshallah. It says in the book of Ar Riqaq, hadith 587, narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, While I was sleeping, a group of my followers they came along and they brought. Uh, close to me, uh, and when they were brought close to me, I recognized them. A man, an angel, came out from amongst us and said, come along. I asked, where? He said, to the hellfire, by Allah. I asked, what is wrong with them? He said, they turned apostates and renegades after you left. Then behold, another group of my followers were brought close to me, and when I recognized them, a man, an angel, came out from me, and then he said to them, Come along. I asked, Where? He said, To the hellfire. By Allah, I asked, What is wrong with them? He said, They turned apostate and renegades after you left. So I did not see any one of my sahaba, any one of them, escaping, except a few who were like camels without a shepherd. SubhanAllah. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Prophet is saying, he did not see amongst the Sahaba anyone escaping the hellfire except a few. Sahih al-Bukhari. Now, inshallah, to our hadith in Al-Kafi. There is a hadith narrated from Abu Jafar alayhi salam about the words of Allah Most High. When they see the torment approaching, the faces of the unbelievers will blacken and they will be told, this is what you wanted to experience. The Imam alayhi salam said, this ayah was rever revealed about Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abu Talib alayhi salam and his contemporaries who did what they did to him. They will see Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in such a position that will make them envious. This will cause their faces to show miserable signs. It will be said to them, this is the one whose title Amir al-Mu'mineen you had assumed. SubhanAllah. The horrors that are awaiting anyone who takes the status which doesn't belong to them. If you claim to be a prophet and you're not the prophet, your status is going to be extremely miserable. And if you are not Amir al-Mu'mineen and you claim to be Amir al-Mu'mineen, your status is equally as miserable. In Al-Kafi it says that a number of the Sahaba had narrated from Abu Abdullah alayhi salam who said the following, The Messenger of Allah has said, Whoever would want to live my, li my life, and whoever would want to die uh, like I will die, and enter the Garden of Eden that my Lord has planted with his own hands, he must love Ali alayhi salam. He must love and acknowledge his divine authority and love those who love him. And he must be the enemy of his enemies and submit in obedience to his successors after him because they are of my family and my flesh and blood. Allah has given them my understanding and knowledge. I appeal to Allah and I complain to Allah about the case of my people's dealings. They're denying the virtues and excellence of the Imams from my family. And I complain to Allah for their disregard of my relation with them. By Allah, they will murder my son Al Hussein alayhi salam. May Allah deprive them of my intercession. In another hadith, the final one I'll quote, inshallah from Imam Abu Abdullah alayhi salam, who said, do you know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa died or was killed? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if he dies, rather is killed, you would turn back upon your heels. 
So he, sallallahu alayhi wa was poisoned to death by the two ladies. So we said, those two and their fathers are the worst in creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Bihar al-Anwar, volume 22, page 516. From these hadith, just a few hadith that we quote, it's very obvious that something extremely wrong took place at the end of the Prophet ﷺ's life and after his death continued to go wrong. From these hadith in Bukhari and in our own books, you can see that being a Sahaba, being a wife, being anything, if you are a Kafir, you're a Kafir. If you're a Munafiq, you're a Munafiq. It won't save you except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a promise or put his mercy upon you. But just being a Sahaba, just seeing the Prophet is not enough. We know that the Sahaba of Nuh السلام, drowned, even his own son drowned. And, he, and the wife of Nuh السلام, and the wife of Lut السلام, as narrated in Surah Tahrim, they're in the hellfire. The same Surah which has 12 ayahs, which is comparing these two wives to the two wives Aisha and Hafsa where in Surah Tahrim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very explicitly, He says that these two women could be replaced by better women, Muslimat. That's the first thing that they could be replaced by, Muslimat. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replace Muslimat with Muslimat? There's something very wrong here. With regards to the, uh, the hadith that I quoted, which said that those who assume the title of Amir al-Mu'mineen wrongly, that they're doomed, who was called Amir al-Mu'mineen and all of the hadith that we look, people refer to Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman as Amir al-Mu'mineen wrongfully. Nobody can be the friend of Ali salam who takes the rights of Ali salam away. Nobody can be a helper of Imam Ali salam who helps those who fight against him. And how can anybody claim to love the Prophet Sallallahu if they don't obey him when he appoints Imam Ali salam as his successor and makes it very clear numerous times throughout his life. And in fact, they don't only not acknowledge it, but they fight against him and they oppress him. And they don't have any sort of sympathy from what we can tell. And in fact, are responsible for the death of his wife, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Fatima Tazahra alayhi salam. And these people, if they are not the worst of creation, then who possibly could be the worst of creation? The people who are responsible for all of the misery that we have today. If Imam Ali alayhi salam had have been given his rights from the beginning, somebody else maybe would have taken it away. Somebody would have. This was the destiny of, of the ummah that we had to experience a test. And it just so happened that the test is Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, Aisha, Hafsa, that they are the people who are the test. It could have been anyone else and we would be cursing them today. But these are the people who are the test. The people who stepped in front and who blocked the guidance from reaching us without any sort of uh, interference. But because this guidance was being blocked and interfered by these people, then we suffer like we do today. There's confusion. People don't know how to pray today. They, they fold their arms this way, that way, that way. Why? Why the, the unnecessary confusion? Simply because people stepped in front of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abu Talib salam, and stopped his wonderful light, his nur, his guidance from reaching us. So la'natullah alayhi upon all of those people. And there's nothing that we can do to, to, to stop Allah's wrath upon those people. Because these are the people who are responsible for all of the problems that we see today. Simply because we were not able to receive the nur that they were offering to us, then here we are suffering lacking in the, in the darkness, fumbling around, waiting for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, inshaAllah, may Allah hasten his reappearance, that when he comes, he'll revive the true sunnah and the true understanding of Islam, which, which would have come to us, inshaAllah, had these people had not stepped in the way. Inshallah, I think my time is running out, so inshaAllah, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim will allow the respected Shaykh to take over from here, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.